This one? Yes. This one's working. Good morning. There we go. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to the um, Cruising Division Skippers meeting for, uh, for the race to Mackinac presented by Wintrust. As we do everywhere, I want to remind you that um, the meeting is a courtesy. The skipper, the person in charge, is responsible to read and understand the notice of races, the SIs, the RRS, rating certificates, all the other wonderful stuff we email you and send you throughout the year. That was me, I'm sorry. Um, I want to remind you that there's uh, social media opportunities. The Facebook link is shown, Twitter and Instagram, at Race to Mackinac. And if your boat has a Twitter feed or a base Facebook page, uh, email the link to communications at chicagoyachtclub.org. And um, we'll try to get all those things up. Um, I'd like now to introduce Commodore Greg Marecki. Um, say a few words of welcome. Uh, thank you, Jay. Uh, first off, I I've got some a few words of thanks. I just uh, first of all I want to welcome all of you on behalf of the bo board, the flag officers, and all of the members of the Chicago Yacht Club. It's great to have you all here. It's a particular pleasure to have the, all the cruising division folks here. Um, some of you may not be familiar with the history of the cruising division, but it came about in 2006 when we were trying to get more boats on the start line. And, um, and uh, we, I think we started with about 18 or 20 boats, and now we're up to about 50 or 60. So it's really a pleasure to have you all, and uh, we're delighted that you've chosen to join us this year. Uh, and I hope you have a fast uh, and, and safe race up, up to the island. I'd like to thank our sponsors. We've got a fantastic group of sponsors this year. Um, Starline Ferry, Synology, Sam Adams, Michigan Avenue Magazine, the Grand Hotel is uh, with us again. We have an official broadband provider this year, Inmarsat, so we're delighted to welcome them. Uh, BMO Harris is with us this year. We're delighted to have them with us. We, of course, have uh, Mount Gay, of course. Those of you who are into rum, uh, we'll be glad to see them back. Line Honors is a new sponsor this year. They're offering some fantastic gear. Uh, they've got a great new Mac Race belt. I highly recommend, so take a look at that. Um, and we certainly have Vov Clico back, those of you who uh, who have been here for a while have seen the champagne flowing. So thanks to all of them. And last but certainly not least, I want to offer a special thanks to our presenting sponsor, Wintrust. Uh, Wintrust, yes, please. We are, we're delighted to have Wintrust with us. They're not only sponsoring the race to Mackinac, but they're also sponsoring a number of Chicago Yacht Club's community initiatives, such as our special needs uh, crews and sight impaired cruises. So they're, uh, they're really a great part of the community and we're delighted to have them with us for this event as well. Um, I'd also like to offer a word of thanks to our race committee led by Hella Getz. Hella, wa wave to us. Hella is famous for being the voice of the Chicago Yacht Club Race Committee on Mackinac Island. So now, well, at least for, for eight hours a day, right? Okay. And I'd also like to thank our MAC committee, led by my friend Matt Gallagher. Uh, the MAC committee uh, worked really hard to get this race off the ground. Um, I was a MAC chair many years ago, so I know uh, how difficult that job is. So, Matt, uh, come on up and take a bow. So. Before I turn this over to Matt, uh, Matt is actually the first cruising division skipper to ever be the, a MAC chair. So a little known history here. But uh, yeah, give him, give him a round of applause. So Matt, you will be, you will be with these uh, folks for the most part on, at around 3 o'clock, right? You're taking off. And you're going to get there as quickly as possible. And when you get to the island, I'd like you to bring a couple of things with you. So a care package from, from your friends. <laughs> <laughs> on the board. Uh, we've got a chilled bottle of Eau Clicquot, so keep that cold. Yeah, and then we've got a pretty good-sized bottle of Mount Gay to keep you fortified when you get there. So congratulations. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Uh, I appreciate the kind words, but, uh, you know, I'm, I am the face and probably more the email address of uh, of a, uh, a group of great volunteers, probably have I think about 20 or 22 people on the MAC committee who really do work year round. Um, so a good number of them are here right now. 
Most of them are wearing black shirts like this one, so if you see those people, please say thank you. But uh, would all my friends in the MAC committee stand up and wave or something so we can thank you? A couple of them mainly over here in the corner. Um, and as Greg said, I think I am the first uh, MAC chairman to be a skipper, although my, uh, our predecessor, Greg Freeman, is racing in the cruising division this year also, which is great. Um, and I'm real proud to, to be here and, and be part of you guys. Um, you know, it is a cruising division, but most of you know it's, it's a race for us, just like it is for the people who start on, uh, on, uh, on Saturday. So thanks. Um, with that, now I get to talk about, talk about the less fun stuff. Um, Y'all got an email from me a couple days ago, which I uh, lovingly refer to as the crew behaving badly email. Um, you guys, as skippers, as invited competitors, are responsible for the conduct of your crew. Um, here on the island, on the water, obviously, until the race is over, until they go home. It doesn't matter if you're asleep and they're misbehaving. If I get a call from the Mackinac Island Police Department or someone like that, you're going to get a call from me. So please, it's very rare that we have problems. The vast majority of people go up there and have a great time. But please make sure you talk to your, uh, talk to your crew and just make sure they understand that there's consequences for everybody on the boat um, if they, if they take it a little too far. So I uh, appreciate it if you have words with your crew. Uh, again, and I really hope to not have to make that phone call to anybody. Um, a couple other practical things. Transponders, um, most of you are cruising division people. A couple of you are racers. I don't know if anyone here is doing the Super Mac or the Bayview Mac. Um, the return requirements are a little bit different if you're doing the Super Mac or the Bayview Mac. Um, so please be sure to talk to the Yellow Brick guys about that. For the vast majority of us who are doing just the Chicago Mac, you got to return that transponder when you turn in your finished card on the island. If this is your first race, come talk to one of us about that if you're at all confused about it, because it's a pretty expensive mistake if you don't. Um, you're going to wind up, if you lose it, you're in a lot of trouble, but if you, if you wind up uh, not turning it on time, you're going to be paying a pretty hefty FedEx charge back to England where those things need to go. So if you're confused in any way about that, please ask anyone in the MAC committee, anyone in our race committee, and they'll be more than happy to help you out about that with that. But every year we have one or two poor guy who's spending $150 to FedEx something to England, and I hope that's not going to be you. Um, the other thing, again, for those of you who are newer, um, and we've had reasonably fast cruising division races la the last couple of years, so if you are in the cruising division the last couple of years, your experience might not be typical for docking. Um, docking on the island is an incredibly difficult process. Um, my friend Jay Kehoe, is Jay here still? Did he wander off? There's Jay. Jay Kehoe is our docking czar. He is also um, our clubs on the water director. Um, Jay has the job of fitting 250 boats into a harbor designed for 60. 270. Sorry, 270 <laughs> boats. Not, not that you're counting, Jay, right? Um, 270 boats into a harbor designed for 60. When you checked in, you got assigned a docking zone. That's an idea. That's a concept. That may very well be where you wind up. It may very well not be where you line up. Please, please, please listen to the instruction you get from Jay, from Chuck, from our other our other docking teams up there. You may be going somewhere entirely different. It just depends on the order the boats get in and where they can fit you. Um, it's a jigsaw puzzle, and you have to be flexible and, and work with them on that. If you're uncomfortable doing that, you can still switch to St. Ignace. Um, I can tell you next year my boat will be in St. Ignace. It's a great place to go. Uh, you, don't, you don't need to be on the island. But if you do need to be on the island, you got to listen to Jay and his team and just do what they tell you, even if it's not what you're expecting. We need flexibility out of you guys, just like we expect it out of them. Make sure you bring enough fenders, lines. You're going to be rafted. You're almost certainly going to be rafted. Um, you're going to wind up setting a breast hook if you're at the end of the line. We'll, our folks will help you with that. They'll tell you what to do, but it's your responsibility to dock your boats. Anything else, Jeff? Oh yeah, water levels. A um, couple years ago, those of you who raced, remember we were all whining about how water levels were down, 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 and we weren't sure if we could fit everyone in the harbor. Well, guess what? This year, they're like way up from, from historic average. We have docks that are awash underwater, the coal dock, which I don't think very many of you will wind up on, but the coal dock's actually under six inches of water, part of it. Um, so it's going to be different. It's going to be a different experience. Those are all fixed piers, not floating piers, like by and large we have here in Chicago. Um, so just be prepared for some uh, different docking excitement when you get up there. Um, I also want to give a, a big round of thanks to um, our great staff here at Chicago Yacht Club, led by uh, our general manager, Dwight Jensen, who's over there. Um, they, uh, 
they do a great job hosting this event. This is a high impact event for our club and for our staff. And uh, we really appreciate everything they do to make both of us members and, and you, our guests, feel welcome both here and at our Belmont station. So thank you. Um, next, I would like to introduce um, our jury. Hopefully this is the only time you see our jury, but um, I do want you to know who they are, just in case. Um, I'm gonna invite, uh, our, invite the three of them to come up and just kind of wave so you recognize their faces, and then I think our chief judge would like to say hi. Um, our chief judge is Fred Hagedorn, and we also have John Mooney and Jim Tishner. Good morning, and I want to uh, share the welcome to our race and wish you all the very best, and I hope to see you at lots of parties and nowhere else. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Um, one, more, uh, one more logistics thing. The official notice board for this race is online. We are posting things on there. You need to check it. It's on the MAC website. Scroll down on the left. It says official notice board. Check it. There have already been um, a couple of interpretations of various rules, most of which don't affect the cruising division too much, but you are responsible for checking that. We'll post courtesy copies, but you may not see them. And I think there may be one more minor amendment to the SIs coming out, which again, I don't think is gonna have a great impact on, on the cruising division, but the racers should read that. So please be sure to check that. Um, next, I wanna introduce um, a face I'll be familiar from the last couple of years, um, our friend, Dr. Tom Kopp, who wants to talk briefly about a uh, medical study that we and the Bayview race have been participating in the last couple of years, Tom. Good morning, my name is uh, Thomas Kopp. I'm an emergency medicine physician out of Toledo, long time sailor, shorter time physician, I guess. Um, I wanna thank uh, Reese Chairman Gallagher for allowing us uh, to, for his support um, for surveying this race. What we're looking at are injuries and illnesses that take place during this race. Um, it's, we're referring to it as the Glory Study, which is a Great Lakes Offshore Racing Event Study. Um, we're collecting data on uh, offshore races in all five Great Lakes. This will be the second year for the Chicago race. Um, this is what the uh, survey looks like. I've posted some of them around the room. Um, if you would like to uh, pick up a copy um, and turn it in at the finish, um, that would be great. Um, we're interested Okay. We're interested in um, any injuries and illnesses that take place during the race itself. So um, anything that happens on before the race like tonight wouldn't count. Um, anything that happens on the island after we finish doesn't count. So any bar brawls or uh, crew bad behavior, as it was noted, um, don't, won't count. Um, but certainly um, there's a couple different ways to turn the survey in. Um, you can. We'll have volunteers at the finish when you check in and deliver your yellow brick as well as your finishing card. We'll have people um, accepting uh, the surveys at that time. And um, you can also email and fax. Uh, one of the, th one of the uh, groups that we're missing and they're most interested in are the folks that don't actually uh, finish the race, uh, that need to drop out for one reason or another. And that's why I would encourage you to pick up um, a copy of, of the survey and then um, mail it in in case um, you're not on the island to turn it in. Um, and one quick thing, you know, this is the last year we're doing uh, the survey. We've collected surveys, it's one per boat, um, over 650 boats encompassing over 5,500 sailors um, in five races to date. So um, really strongly encourage this is, uh, you to participate. This is really an investment in the future of racing um, and uh, how to prepare for future races. So. Um, also would like to mention uh, this was uh, in part possible from a grant that we received from the Wilder uh, Wilderness Medical Society. And um, that's pretty much it. So grab a survey, sail fast, sail safe, and we'll see you on the island. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. As, uh, as Commodore Marecki mentioned, I, I view this as part of our club's commitment to community outreach and community service, and this is a way we can all, we can all give back to the sport. So, 
Um, I'm going to turn this over in a second to my uh, friend and our principal race officer, Hella Getz, but I just, I think this is my last chance to say thank you to you guys for participating in our race. Um, I hope to be handing you a flag up on the podium on the island. Uh, normally you say to people, sail fast and I'll see you on the island. I would prefer you guys all sail slow and I'll see you on the island so I can hand myself a flag. But have a great race, have a good time, sail fast, I'll see you on the island. Thanks. Oh, talking to it. You don't like my, my PE voice? Is it working for you? <laughs> okay, so I'm looking for the slide for the, for the starting line. This does not pertain to the cruising. This is for the starters tomorrow, the parade of boats. So the next slide. Where is my clicker? Okay, this is why we go through this today. Keep on going. At any rate, on the east end of the line, you will be looking for the boat. No, 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 you will be looking for carrier. Carrier on the east end, which is right behind me. That's our signal boat. On the west end will be the boat Argo. Top hat is for, tom or for tomorrow. That's carrier. That will be on the east end of your line with this flag. And then this boat, Argo, will be on the west end. I mean, I feel that the quicker that you can identify the playground when it's your 10 minutes in there, you'll have a better chance to prep yourself for a good, safe, proper start, which is what we are looking for, okay? Race committee will be on channel 7-8 to communicate courtesy broadcast with you. And at the end, let's do that part correct too. Please make sure you open up your under the bridge envelope, follow all of those instructions, post check-in for you, make sure that that yellow card, your finish card, and your transponder come to the big top, the tent, and turn that into the race committee representatives there. And as the math committee is in their black shirts around, if you are looking for any race committee members, we are sporting our new gear this year as well. We will be wearing this on the island. If you are ever interested in asking a question from one of us, please seek us out. Have a great, great, safe, legal race. And I'd like to introduce to you now Ron White. Oh, wait a second. This is Vicki Matthews. She is your DRO. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, Ron White, our chief measure. Good morning. Um, as usual, uh, I'm going to announce the ORR course mix uh, for this division. This is for cruising only, not for the uh, racing divisions. That'll be announced this afternoon. Um, We've been doing this for a long time. Sometimes we get it right. Last year, it was, it was the right deal. Some years we haven't. You know, you know, it's the nature of weather forecasting. So we've, we've, we're always striving for new methods and techniques. And this year, we kind of went a little mystical. Uh, we put together this very private committee. We're into mysticism and voodoo. And um, we actually asked for some volunteers for human sacrifice. Um, the multi-purpose multi kind of thought process there, but they, they, they wouldn't consent, so we, for this uh, pick, we beheaded a rabbit, 
and we uh, shot a squirrel with a pellet gun that I borrowed from my son. So I'm, I'm confident here, reliability-wise, that we're, we're on the cutting edge. Uh, for the cruising division, the wind mix will be uh, the Chicago Mac, mostly off wind. Um, my next job is to introduce our weather briefer. And, uh, you know, Chris probably doesn't need an introduction, which is why I usually make fun of him. Um, but, but I asked him this morning, so how many times have we done this now? And he goes, oh, I, you know, I think 10. And I obviously make a lot of stuff up up here, but this is a true story. Do you remember when we used to do these down at the Field Museum? Yeah. yeah. Well, one year, and I, and I don't recall a specific year, we had had a longtime legendary Chicago weather forecaster. He was, he was you know, get, get toward the end, and we, we were, I was standing off to the side, and he's doing his weather briefing. It made no sense. I mean, it was just really just wonky. I mean, it, it made, made no sense for anything else we were looking at. And honest to God truth, after the meeting, I walked up and I looked at his, you know, slides on the overhead projector. He gave the prior year's weather briefing. <laughs> so when Chris said, I, I don't know, maybe 10 years, I did tell him that based on past experience, we are watching closely. Uh, you know, we'll give him the hook in plenty of time. But Chris continues to pile on achievements. Uh, and, and the most recent win is uh, doing the weather for Abu Dhabi in the, uh, in the Volvo Ocean Race. So congratulations, Chris. And it's my pleasure to introduce Chris Bedford. I guess I do have a shelf life, <laughs> and we'll see how long this lasts. I wouldn't call it a gravy train, but all right. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome back. Another, another good year and a, another uh, tricky forecast, but I've learned that they're all tricky, so uh, let's get uh, straight to it if I can figure out how to run this thing. There we go. Um, this is my standard disclaimer slide that I put up every year. You, you guys all know this, but uh, this year is probably pretty important that you keep track of what's happening with the weather, um, sort of not only in the near future, in the next hour or two, but also a little bit longer term. Um, this is a changeable forecast. We've had uh, quite a split in the models, which is never a good sign. And uh, we uh, could very well have some significant weather moving into the, uh, into the lake at some point this weekend. I'm not looking for any really severe storms, but um, uh, there could be some thunderstorms and maybe some isolated uh, squalls. So definitely want you to be on top of things and uh, keep monitoring the uh, NOAA weather radio. So stay connected, stay on that VHF, especially if you observe that conditions are changing around you. Also, just pick up the latest forecasts and outlooks. Uh, we'll also have uh, some active Twitter stuff going on, and I'll be posting uh, periodically on Twitter. Um, and the hashtag MacWX is going to be what we're using on uh, Twitter for sort of collating all just Mac race weather information. Um, and for those of you that are using routing software, if you go to uh, this um, uh, web address here, uh, I'll be posting some uh, high resolution grib files uh, there for you from a number of different models. And they're available for uh, both uh, uh, the Mac race and the Super Mac race. All right, so let's get down to it. Um, <clears throat> This is the uh, severe weather outlook for today, and I always, uh, I always show this to uh, make sure that um, uh, we're not um, uh, in any severe weather situations, but today all the rain is uh, down to the south. So as you get out of here, uh, although we've got this milky sky right now and a little bit of a lake breeze already starting, um, we have some showers down to the south, as we'll show in a second. Uh, right now, I'm not expecting any severe weather uh, risks in the area. Tomorrow, um, right now, I th uh, the uh, Severe Prediction Center um, 
from NOAA is actually showing us in a marginal uh, severe weather situation uh, just in sort of the southern and western part of the lake. I think that's actually not going to be a risk until later tomorrow, if, if at all. Uh, so it would be more like uh, tomorrow, uh, late tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening, we could have some stuff moving off the uh, Wisconsin-Illinois shore into the lake. Uh, so it would be basically in the southern, southern part of the lake if it's a risk at all. That does expand for Sunday, however, uh, into the lake, especially the south half. The light green area is just a general risk of, severe, of thunderstorms, not severe thunderstorms. It's not until you get to the darker green and the, and the yellow where uh, things are, are potentially severe. So uh, we do have this risk that's kind of spreading across the lake um, as we go through the weekend. Um, by Monday, most of the severe threat moves down to the south, and I think on Monday it's just basically going to be a rain uh, issue up in the northern part of the lake. So this does look like it's going to be a wet race, but then again, sailing is a water sport. <laughs> All right, uh, so the surface weather map as of this morning um, shows this high pressure, which is uh, sitting just over uh, northern Indiana. This is a really slow moving uh, system. It's not particularly strong, but it's um, controlling our weather at the moment. The other weather feature to really draw your attention to, though, is that warm front that's sitting down to the south across uh, Missouri and uh, uh, Kansas area. That feature is going to slowly, once this high starts to move east, that, that warm front feature is going to slowly start to move north. And it's some, some of that which is going to bring some possible rain into the southern part of the lake uh, later tomorrow and into Sunday. But then there's also a low pressure area that's off the chart to the west which may uh, send some energy along that front and come into the lake uh, during the late Saturday and into, into Sunday. And that's something that uh, uh, we're going to be watching going forward here. Here's this morning's satellite picture. So this, this kind of milky, hazy sky we have right now is mostly high-level cloud. It's debris from um, uh, some rain that's uh, down to the south. We can see on the radar uh, image here, you can see there's some cells down across east-central Illinois. And uh, that uh, cloud cover we're getting right now is just basically uh, debris. All the other returns you're seeing are, are just generally ground clutter. And also, if you look closely, just to use this as a teaching moment, uh, if you look closely along the Illinois, right along the Chicago coast, you'll see some stronger returns. And that's because there's a very strong temperature gradient between the lake and the water, uh, the, sorry, the lake and the land. Um, and it's actually bending the, uh, the radar signals and causing the shoreline to show up. Uh, on the radar, which is kind of interesting. This is the wind field as of 7 o'clock this morning, but it's already changed substantially. At that time, we had a little offshore breeze going, but as I said, uh, as soon as we got the sun up and a little bit of heating, it shut that breeze down, and we've switched into what amounts to a light lake breeze now. All right, and uh, there's wave heights, obviously light winds across the lake, so we don't have much wave action to speak of. Now here's the interesting shot. This is the water temperature, and this is important for this race, uh, particularly for today and tomorrow. Um, we've got still some pretty cold water over the south uh, central part of uh, Lake Michigan. And uh, we have high pressure that is coming um, across northern uh, Indiana there and moving into uh, Ohio. What's going to happen is uh, that high is sort of the synoptic big scale weather feature. That's going to continue to move slowly to the east. But because we have all this cold uh, water sitting in the southern part of the lake, a little bubble of that high pressure is actually going to center itself somewhere over the southern part of the lake and just kind of sit there. That's going to shut the wind down uh, in the middle part of the lake. It also helps to promote uh, the lake breeze. So we get a, uh, an easier uh, fill of the lake breeze uh, going on. But out in the middle part of the lake, where that cold water is, uh, there just isn't enough, um, there just is basically no wind because there's this little high pressure there. The second thing is when uh, eventually we're going to start to get sort of a southerly gradient trying to fill onto the lake, which is great. That would be a more consistent wind across the lake. But with all this cold water, that warm, uh, low-density air in the southerly has a hard time mixing down 
and pushing the cold, dense air sitting over this cold spot on the lake out of the way. So we basically end up with this light patch over the south central part of the lake that is going to persist into tonight and even into tomorrow. Um, so most of the breeze action for today is going to be along the shorelines, particularly uh, the western shore of the lake. And then same thing, I think, for tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow's start. Uh, most of the action will be on the Illinois-Wisconsin shore. And it will, as always, be a question of when do you start to head out uh, into the lake uh, so that you don't end up sailing all the way around the long way. All right, so here's the forecast for this afternoon. We still see that high pressure. Not much change, really, in the weather map from uh, this, this morning. Um, that warm front you can see down across uh, uh, Missouri and Kansas, not really fast moving. That It's got to wait for this high pressure to kind of move out of the way. The other thing is that low that you see up over the high plains and up into Montana and stuff, that's got to develop a little bit more as well. So until that happens, that warm front isn't really going to progress north. So here's the wind field for uh, uh, start time this afternoon. And you can see exactly what I was just talking about with respect to that little bubble high pressure sitting over the center part of the lake. You see, the, you can actually see a little high pressure circulation um, over the southern part of the lake. And you can see the air flowing out of that high and spinning in a, in a clockwise manner. So there's air sinking in that section. And then right along the Illinois shore, you'll see that there's this onshore flow, but it's tucked in pretty close. Uh, so that's the lake breeze developing. Now further up the lake, there's actually a little bit warmer water and also stronger gradient. The solid lines, the solid black lines are, are isobars, so they're closer together away from the center of the high pressure up there, so we have stronger gradient wind, and that's helping to drive this uh, uh, more pressure up in the northern part of the lake. So it's really a case of uh, getting away from the shore and trying to work your way up north and try and hook into that, that better pressure because this, this basic pattern holds right into tomorrow. Uh, this is the forecast for this evening around 7 o'clock local time. Again, you can see that light air patch sitting over the center of the lake just to the uh, uh, east of Chicago and uh, that little finger of pressure sticking down the shoreline, uh, down the Wisconsin-Illinois shoreline, that's the lake breeze. And that's uh, probably what you're going to be searching for and, and uh, trying to sail north in as you get away from the start. Tomorrow morning, uh, just after midnight, not much change in the, in the picture. That high moves ever so slightly to the east. And now we do start to see the warm front begin to lift a little bit further to the north. You'll also see a green line that runs through central Illinois and uh, uh, central Iowa. That's sort of the leading edge of where rain could be at this time. So here's our wind field uh, for uh, just after midnight tonight. Now, of course, when the land cools at night, we lose the lake breeze. So, so the wind that you were sailing up the shore on starts to die after sunset tonight and the better chances for pressure are just a little bit further offshore, trying to get out uh, toward where that gradient is. But you see you, uh, you have to get north in order to get into that pressure. So initially north along the shoreline and then sort of edging away from the shore uh, at sunset to try and set up for this, uh, this southerly gradient pressure that's set up over the rest of the lake. All right, tomorrow, we see the primary high has moved out to the east over Pennsylvania, but you see that little high pressure that's sitting back over, over uh, uh, Chicago, basically. That's the little bubble high that I'm talking about. So it's still in place tomorrow because that cold uh, air that's sitting over the water uh, just sort of allows a little bit of a high pressure to stay in that location. The warm front is lifting north, albeit very slowly. We see some low pressure starting to develop over the uh, plains at this time. We also see that the rain is edging a little bit closer, but still off the lake. So at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, we have light air along both shores, and through the middle part of the lake, uh, we have this light southerly. I actually think this forecast is optimistic for about the southern third of the lake. I think it's actually going to be uh, quite a bit lighter than what this is showing. This is showing probably about... Uh, uh, sort of five to eight knots of breeze, I think it's probably going to be more like zero to five.
Bring it. Bring it. All right. So by uh, afternoon on Saturday, we still have that light patch over the southern part of the lake. But because the, the high is a little bit weaker, we get a stronger lake breeze tomorrow. So this racing fleet looks like they're going to get away with a little bit better uh, pressure. But basically, their strategy appears to be about the same. For you all, you're going to be trying to get into the middle of the lake, I think, by this point to try and pick up that, that gradient pressure and shorten your distance uh, to the mark. So by uh, tomorrow afternoon, still high pressure hanging back across Michigan, but it is finally starting to move out. And this is the point where we could start to see some rain uh, uh, moving in toward the lake. I really think it's going to hold off, though. One, one advantage of the cold water is that anything that tries to move off the shore that is based upon the heating of the land dies very quickly once it hits that uh, cold air over, over the lake. So um, I really think that there's going to be a slow process for getting rain into the lake. And it's not until more uh, dynamic weather arrives from the east going into uh, uh, m maybe another six hours or so later that uh, things could happen. All right, now here's, here's where we get some interesting stuff happening, and here's also where the models start to get very confused and start to uh, uh, diverge a bit. I'm going to be showing you what is a pessimistic forecast. My job, in part, is to lower your expectations <laughs> because if things turn out better, you're not angry. If things are, are worse than what I say they're going to be, then you're angry and... I have to delete a lot of emails very quickly. Um, so basically, on Saturday night, we've got this southerly gradient flow, again, filling up the lake. But watch out, as I uh, flip through the time here, watch out to the west. And what you're going to see is a little wave of low pressure that's just coming in just to the north of that warm front. And that could excite a low pressure development uh, over the central part of the lake on Saturday. So here's where that is starting to happen. Here, this is midnight. And you can see we have southerly winds, decent southerly winds over the southern part of the lake. But if you look up at the northern part of the lake, you'll see there's a location where all the wind is diverging. What the model is telling us there is that there's going to be a, uh, probably some sort of a thunderstorm cell or some sort of rain area coming onto the lake, causing this outflow um, in that area. Now. This is the forecast for Sunday morning. And <clears throat> there isn't a low over Wisconsin on this chart, but there may very well be one at this time. And I think there's a, a, a pretty good chance that we'll start to see some sort of a low develop uh, over Wisconsin. But the main area of warm air is still down to the south, and the high is finally starting to get out of the way, allowing that warm air to move north. So here's the uh, forecast for Sunday. And you'll see, if you look over um, uh, the Wisconsin shore, you'll see a low pressure circulation at this time. And uh, so the wind in the northern part of the lake is starting to back to the southeast and to the east as that low comes across. And then by uh, midday on Sunday, there's that low pressure just sitting up off of Sleeping Bear. And so we've got easterly winds now coming in through uh, the straits and down across uh, beaver and, and the Manitous, uh, and, and so the southwesterly winds still holding across the southern part of the lake, showing a broad circulation around that low pressure area. By Sunday night, the low moves into Michigan, and now the wind is starting to, to switch around and come in from the north and northwest, sorry, northeast, um, across the upper part of the lake. And then by Monday, the low moves to uh, Huron, and it's a pretty small, compact low, so the wind field actually starts to die very quickly uh, across uh, Lake Michigan. So again, you'll see there's a significant difference here between that chart I just showed you and if you just take this forecast chart on its, on its uh, face. But see the wide distance between the isobar that's uh, running through southern Ontario and the one that's running through Wisconsin? Somewhere in there is, is probably this low pressure area. And um, so there's still the primary low is back to the, uh, to the, to the west. And that's why the wind is, um, 
is decreasing very quickly out to the west because there's another low pressure area coming without a high following this one. So by Monday morning, the wind is still northerly uh, around that low pressure area, but it's collapsing very quickly across the lake. Um, and in fact, during the day on Monday, we could start to see it gets so light that we could have another lake breeze developing in the northern part of the lake. That's what uh, uh, the chart is showing here. And that continues into, into Monday evening. So the big question mark on this forecast is, actually, I could go ahead, uh, one here. Um, so Tuesday, that low pressure is all out to the east by this time. And uh, that's when we get um, uh, a, a better northerly flow coming down across the lake. So the big question right now is, what's going to happen with that low pressure area? Is it going to develop? Is it going to develop in that location? And I'd say it's 50-50. I know that's a meteorologist cop-out, but, but seriously, it's, I'd say it's 50-50 whether or not it's going to develop. If it doesn't, then you have a much more optimistic forecast with the wind staying uh, as, a, as a following breeze pretty much uh, almost all the way up, at least to Gray's Reef for you all, before it actually uh, uh, shifts around. So the timing on that is really anywhere between about... Um, sort of the Sleeping Bear area and Gray's Reef, I think, at this point. So I've done some routes with a few different boats, and uh, as you can see, they're all pretty much doing the same thing, uh, staying tight in along the Illinois-Wisconsin shore tonight, or uh, this afternoon, and into this evening, trying to get a little bit off the shore um, uh, as they go up, and then uh, really crank, once they reach that stronger southerly that I showed on the chart, then coming in. Um, uh, across the lake on starboard uh, and, and heading straight up. There's a few outliers up there. Some are going inside, some outside the Manitous. You just take that as it comes, really. Um, if if uh, we have an easterly breeze uh, in that area, it might be a little bit more advantageous to be a bit offshore uh, as, you're, as you're coming there, so maybe an outside course might be better. But the bad thing is it, it kind of screws up your angle after you get around the Manitous. So there's a bit of a trade-off there. Uh, you might have better pressure, but not as great an angle, whereas the boats that are closer in may have better angle. But it does look like, for most of you all, there'll be some sort of an upwind finish. And also remember that uh, uh, you're going to get wet <laughs> in the northern, northern half of the lake. So anyway, that's, that's the outlook. I wish you all a great trip up there, and have a lot of fun. Thanks. Be safe. Thank you, Chris. That's always exciting, and I can't wait to see how it changes tonight. Um, the Skipper's meeting will be up uh, on YouTube shortly, uh, so you can go there and find it. Look at this again. If there's anything you missed or need to bone up on. Um, other than that, be safe, sail fast, and have fun. Thank you for coming.